Oh my God, you guys are so sweet. Is this on? I, I was like, oh, the room's at capacity. I'm so touched. And then I went, they don't know it's for me. Oh my God. I said to Betsy, I was like, they have me listed as moderator. They're here for me, but you can join. <laughs> and then you were like, well, I hope people don't leave. I said, now, why would you say that to me before we go Did out I there? Say that? I didn't say that. Why would you say that to me before we go? I, oh, this wait. is not true. Um, let me tell you, I got this lovely email, and they said, Reshma, we have a mystery guest for the first time, and we want you to talk to them. And then for two paragraphs, they don't tell me who it is. And I was like, am I interviewing a ghost? And I'm so glad it's Betsy, because... When did you find out? I'm not telling you that. Oh, there are so a, many mysteries. It's a mystery. <laughs> Well, that was the initial email, and I'm so lo like glad it's the lovely Bessie Brett. Let's give her a round of applause. I'm so happy to be here. So I want to go back. You know, everyone knows what you're known for on television. You know, Wait, obviously, oh, the show. <laughs> few drugs here and there. Breaking Bad, we had someone with a t-shirt at the door already. They, yeah. they know. They know when you're in town. Yeah. So nothing's a mystery to them. So I want to go back to the beginning of your career a bit. Tell us, like, what inspired you to get into this business? Was it a movie, a show, or an actor or actress that you said, that's what I want to do? I think it was just, this sounds a, a little cheesy, but it's true. I... I always like telling stories. My mother maybe would call it lying or when I was younger, but I would, um, in my neighborhood, I'd write plays and cast my neighbors in them. Um, and then I remember my Aunt Josephine, my great aunt, who um, was such a huge influence in my life. I remember watching a, a movie with her and these kids that were my age, um, their parents left them at a gas station. And I was so, I felt what they were feeling. And she said, you sit down and you cry right along with them. Oh my God, this is so, and um, I think it was like, that was such a pivotal moment for me to, it's such a privilege. There are so many things in life that are a privilege. Telling someone else's story is one of them for sure. And I just, I love it. I, I like connecting with the things I share with the character, the things I don't share with the character. I mean, and I, I firmly believe, even if you play a serial killer, and I have, you have to love them. She just gave me a look. Yeah. <laughs> like, Shudder. Mystery. Mystery. <laughs> Mystery. I was just hoping it wasn't method. <laughs> no, no, no I'm, I'm not that person, no. Um, but it, it, I think it's just the, the telling of stories, which that's a, that's is huge for me. That's a terrific answer. Um, and I just love how you, from such a young age, empathized with people and wanted to tell their stories. So, you know, one thing that is a mystery is this industry, how everyone gets to where they are. There's no formula for, you know, you don't, like banking, you, you go to school, you go to business school, and boom, you're a banker. Yeah. <laughs> and then in 10 years, you regret it. Um, but here, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, like, what was your path? Tell us that. Like, what was the education? You know, once you decided, I want to be a storyteller, I, I know where you went to school and everything, but tell us, tell us those different experiences. I mean, know? I never in a million years dreamed I would work in television. I didn't, I didn't grow up in a world where people did that. That was like so foreign to me. Um, do my parents, like, would they prefer I was a high school drama teacher? Maybe. Like, still, maybe. I think they'd be like, well, that, we know what that is. This, like, they still are like, what, do what are you doing? Do they know the pay equity scale for that <laughs> profession? Honestly, they don't. Yeah. There are times, I think, where they're like, you don't need to worry about me. I think they, they've worried. But um, they, I, it, it, you know, they encouraged us, uh, you know, my siblings and I, like, to be creative and do it. And so I, I definitely had that. But I think then when I was like, well, I want to do that for a living, I think they were like, oh, shit. I think that was a little bit of an oh, shit moment for my parents. But they were absolutely supportive. And so when I, in, you know, I, I have a daughter who's um, going to college in the fall. And I said, you don't need to know what you're going to study. Like, you'll figure that out. Like, you don't need to. Most people, if they know what they're going to study, they're going to change that anyway. I knew what I wanted to do, but then you show up and you're like, okay, do I really love this? 
as much as I think that I do. That is excellent advice. And that, and, and I did. Like, I, you know, I, I did a BFA program at U of I, and um, which I got into, like, my dream college, and they gave me a scholarship, and it still wasn't, it was a very expensive school. And, but I was like, I'm never going to have any sort of success now. Like, I really, like, my 18-year-old self was like, now what am I going to do if I don't go to that college? And I went to the, I went to Illinois. I did everything you're not supposed to do. I didn't go to, um, you know, I didn't go to school. I went to school in a cornfield, but I got a really great education, and it was wonderful for me. Um, wouldn't change anything about it. And then after that, I moved to Seattle, because that's where all big careers are made. <laughs> And um, I honestly, I really just wanted to do plays. And I thought that's what I would do. And I went to Seattle and I was busy. I was like the person my age who got those roles that you could cobble together a modest living at. And I, I felt, you know, really successful then. Like I felt just as successful then as I do now. But to, to be able to work was really my goal, always my goal. And then um, I think I just had a moment where I, I, there was a director doing an indie film who saw me in Seattle in a play and said, will you come audition for my movie? And I was like, sure. And so I did. And then she's like, will you come do my movie? And I was like, okay. The fact that there was a director in Seattle. It was <laughs> indie like film, indie film. And she, um, that got me to LA and I didn't hate it. I was like, oh, well, this is okay. But I liked the people I was working with. And then I went back to Seattle and I kept doing one more play and then one more play. And then, and then I left and moved to L.A. Um, and when I first moved out there, I was like, well, this is night and day. But I, I really, like, even when I got to L.A., I'm like, I just, I love what I do. I just want to work. Yeah. Like, I really just want to work. So it was never about, like, you know, being a star, being like being like you know even being on TV. Once I started working in television, one of my favorite parts about doing a play is rehearsal. Like I love it. I love it. I love being around the table. I love being in there and working and figuring out a scene. And and so with TV, I felt like I got to enjoy a lot of that. Like every take then you have to hope they use the one you want them to. <laughs> you have more control when you're out there on stage. Um, I still, to this day, and I feel like I've earned this in my career, I'll have a director say, could you do another one but like this? And I say, yes, I could, but I'm not going to because I'm, I'm afraid you might use it, and yeah. that's not what I want for her there. Um, and so I, when I moved into TV, I was like, I was elated about it. It just yeah. suits me. It suits me. So you did. You went to school in Boston. You also um, did some time at, in Scotland, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So Tell both of those that. were very short stints. So the the program I did with the Moscow Art School at at Harvard. Um, I have dropped out of a few very prestigious graduate <laughs> programs. <laughs> That's one of them. Um, and then I <laughs> I went to UCLA for a week. I didn't even meet all my teachers. And then I got this movie with <laughs> I got this movie with Blythe Danner and I was like, I'm gonna go do that. And they the head of the department was like, Well now you have to do this. I said, I'm confused because isn't that what I'm supposed to I'm learning I'm getting ready to go do this job, but I've already had this job, so I'm gonna go do that. So um Is that one of your first films? I uh, that was back when we were grown ups okay. with Faye Dunaway. Wow. Blythe Danner, um, Jack Palance. I think it was yeah. Jack Palance's last movie. Um, Peter Fonda. Peter Fonda. And and yeah. I was one of the kids in that movie. <laughs> um, and the people that were my siblings, I'm still tight with. Okay. Like, some shows you just, you make a family, and we did, yeah. and I'm still tight with them. Especially your earlier first experience. Yeah. So how did you get to Scotland? Then? Oh, um, I felt I wanted to get out of my department for a little while, and I saw people in other departments studying abroad, and my department politely said, that is not an option here. We have a very specific, every semester is planned out for you. You don't 
get a say in what, you know, the acting program was very specific, which is one of the reasons I chose it. And then I got there and was like, well, let's mix it up a little. So um, <laughs> the head of our department, whose wife was one of my professors and I adored her, she was Scottish. And I felt like if I chose Scotland, I could speak the language and she would cajole him into letting me do that. And that is absolutely what happened. What? <laughs> absolutely what happened. And then they offered it. Calculating. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and then they offered it to other people. Like after that, because I was like, listen, I'm not I'm not a singer. I'm not a great singer. I'm not gonna the, the semester where we do musical theater, let me go to Scotland. I'll study, you know, Bracked over there and all whatever they're doing and <laughs> and then come back and finish up the, my last year and graduate. Um, and that's totally what I did. When I got over there, I loved it. And I'm like, maybe I just want to stay here. So I thought about that for a while. My parents would have really had an oh shit moment. <laughs> um, but I did come back and, and graduate. But I loved it. I loved it. So out of everything you've done, like, where's your passion right now? Is it theater? Is it film? Is it television? Oh, that is a mean question. Um, I... I, you know, even within like the TV or film work I'm doing, I, whatever I've just done, let's do something different. Like the next job. I'll be, if I'm doing, you know, like after Breaking Bad, um, some of the best advice I got from my agents, they were like, I think now you do a comedy. And I'd never even guest starred on a TV comedy. I'd never, nothing. Um, but I, God, I really wanted that job with Michael J. Fox because yeah. I grew up watching him and I was in town, I was in LA because we were still shooting in New Mexico and I was in LA for the Golden Globes. And so um, <laughs> this is just, a, I, I think, a funny and charming story and Mike Fox is in the news. So, you know, he's like every, kind of everywhere right now because of his documentary, which is fantastic. Um, they had me meet with him and... I was like, oh my God, like this was huge for me. I'm from Bay City, Michigan. Like people don't meet with Michael J. Fox and I grew up watching him. So this was super was this exciting. Like post family ties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the future or post back to the oh, future? Oh no, no, no. This is wait, this is like when I was finishing Breaking Bad. This is post like everything before he's doing, doing the that. Michael J. Fox show. And um I went and I read with him and um, it went really well and that felt great. And I showed up um, to, you know, with just like clothes for the Golden Globes. So I had like a pair of cowboy boots and I had like three inch heels to wear. Well, Mike Fox is not my height. <laughs> and so, I was like, oh my God. So I went into that first meeting and um, I, I, we sat down, we read, we read again. And then the producers, they said, why don't you guys stand up and read together? And I just sat there for a second. And I seriously considered, and I told him like this, I said, that big long pause was me wondering if I should just call it. If I should just go over and shake your hand and say, it was such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Good luck with the show. I can't wait to watch it. Um, and he's like, where does it get me if I only cast, pe I only work with people that are my height or shorter? <laughs> and I was like, that's one of the many reasons everyone loves you. But most of his like love interests, I feel like, in television involve yeah, and his wife, and, and his and wife I, in life. He's he like, is. yeah, that's right. He's very confident. He's very confident. So, do you remember which television job where you got your first speaking line? Oh yeah, which one um, judging Amy. And what was your line? Oh, I had a. Um, they called me in for. Uh, they called me in for. Um, a, a co-starring role, which is, it, I think, such a misnomer. That sounds yeah. like, you're right up there, but it's really, like, guest star would be, if you're not a series regular, you'd want to be a guest star. Um, and they called me in for a co-starring role, and then I went in, and then they were like, it was Joe Stern, the producer of that show, said, bring her back for the big guest star. And I had done no TV, not a thing, nothing. And um, I was like, okay. And I was about to go do this play in um, San Jose, San Jose Rep. And so I went in, did my call back before I like left, you know, drove out of town the next day. And um, I saw people I recognized at that audition. And I was like, all right, well, that's great that they saw me. This is so not happening. And then I got it. And then I had to 
convinced the director to let me come back and shoot it. Um, but I was so nervous. I didn't tell anybody, even Amy Brenneman, um, I didn't tell her that I'd never been on TV until after, you know, that show, you're like, it's courtroom, a lot of courtroom stuff. So you, you sit on the court, you know, and you're sitting there and they, Why do you and look like you're riding a horse. And then uh, <laughs> they bring the horses in. See, nobody knows. That's how they do it. That's the mystery. They, and the camera pushes in and then the musical start, you know, when the show's up. And so I waited until I had finished that scene and they got, and they got it and everybody was happy. And then I was like, you guys, this is so thrilling. I have never done this at all, ever. And I was like, oh my God, I, was like, I don't do belong TV. here. <laughs> no, I knew I, bel- I knew I did. I knew I was like, this was great. And then when I saw it, I was really happy with it. And Amy's a theater kid too. So like, it, you know, it was really awesome to, you know, work with this group of people, um, but it was fun, super fun. So do you, have, do you remember what you spent, like what you splurged on for one of your first acting paychecks? Did you treat yourself to anything? Um, or were you I, I used a dining room table. They, my husband and I were like, we really need a table to eat at, and yeah. so we got that, yes. <laughs> With some guest star money, yeah. Nice. Um, all right, should we get into Breaking Bad? Who here has watched Breaking Bad? Oh, good. Uh, that's good. Such good that's taste. Good for our, you what guys have good taste. With. So we're gonna call it Breaking Marie. We're gonna take we're gonna take a little memory lane walk here. I dare you to break her. <laughs> I dare you. Guys, seriously, now I'm scared. Second time. All right. So I'm gonna give. I pulled from the internet a very reliable source. Um, Marie's best lines, and I want you guys to tell me if. And you guys, by you, you can get audience help if you need it. Okay, if Marie lie. said it, or someone else, or okay. it's a lie, which it might be. Okay, okay. you ready? Um, pain is just what weak people feel. Did Marie say it? Yes. And then Hank said, "Pain is my foot in your ass." <laughs> I. D- okay, you're so close. You're right about Hank. Your line was actually, pain is weakness leaving, leaving your, body. your body. Leaving your body. I tricked you. Yeah, you did. That was a little bit of a trickery. Yeah, I know. that was, I was. trickery. I wanted to start. I thought the audience would help you out and be like, no, no. Well, it's so close. I know. It was tricky. Okay, let's get easier, All right. shall we? So this is going to be hard, okay, guys. This, this one. She's not going down easy. No, no, no. <laughs> um, good. I'm staying. I'll heat up lasagna. Do you want to ask the audience? Sure. Yes, I mean I yes. unless unless you're doing that again, no, where we're it's not. similar. I just <laughs> yes, so, that's, so before this, she asked um, me. She's like, "What do I win? What do you want? What do to I win? win? I what like, do, do we win a trip? Win? Um, a new used dining table." <laughs> um, that line I said when um, Aaron Paul was right yep, staying yep. in our house, which was I'm like he and I kept saying I'm like it's so weird to have you on our set. Yeah. Because we never had scenes you together. You didn't interact that much. Um, okay. This might be a little like the first one, but I think you'll catch me in it. Uh, is Mr. I Like Big Butt still there? So. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's something else, but it's it's Ted. You did it. Is it's Mr. Ted. Grabby Hands still Grabby there? Grabby Hands, so that's right. you there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have two points, actually. You got the one before, too. Yeah. Okay. Did Marie say this? Chemotherapy and marijuana go together like apple pie and Chevrolet. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. Points. That's pilot, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. What do you want to win? Oh, God. What should we have her win? And if she loses, I mean, listen, I would do it do? for a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I would do I mean, it for a burrito, honestly. <laughs> um, okay. I hope you don't die, Walt. Did Marie say that? No, I said, I hope you die. Yeah, you said, go ahead and die then. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, you guys, that was one of the last... Oh, my God, that was the last season. That scene gave me chest pains. Like, shooting that, I was like... it, It was... Because Brian's so wonderful, and like you to look him in the eye and tell him over you. and over again that he should just go kill himself was. Oh gosh. Was, I was like ready for a comedy, and the next day, <laughs> <laughs> I I got on a plane and went to New York to work on Michael J. Fox show. Okay, you ready? Yeah. 
only two more, don't worry, it's almost over. Sitting around, smoking marijuana, eating Cheetos, and masturbating do not constitute plans. Oh, sorry, someone, I said the M word. Um, it sounds like something she would say, but I don't remember, I don't, I don't recollect saying that. Was it that. another character who said it? Yes, you get Wait, a burrito. Wait, who did you say? <laughs> Who's Walt? Oh, Walt, who said Walt? I yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, you don't get that one. I don't get yeah. it. Okay. Well. All right, last one. Ready? Yeah. He says he's mostly writing a desk, which between you and me is just the way I want it. Oh. Yeah, I did say that. Yeah. Who'd you say it about? Hank. Hank, you get a burrito. Congratulations. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. We have other fun Breaking Bad stuff, but okay. let's go to the, back to the beginning of that experience. Um, what was that audition process like? Who did you, who'd you audition with? You Vince. 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 Okay. But I met Dean Norris in the waiting room for the audition out at Sony. And I, I recognized him, but I didn't know from what. And we were just talking. Like, he and I are both... Midwestern chatty people mm -hmm. and um, I swear to God we had chemistry in in the waiting room and what um, did you do in that waiting room we were talking and I said listen this is a comedy right like you don't you think and he goes oh yeah <laughs> he's like oh yeah yeah and I said okay good because I'm going in there and reading this is like funny and he's like oh me too and he says he's like I wasn't sure, but he told me he was. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we both. And he said, I went in, and he said, I read it funnier because of you. And I said, I read it funnier because of you. And then I felt like that's kind of who they just ended up being. Yeah. Did, did they bring you both in the room that day together? Or no. no. Okay, that's no. interesting. No. We, they we never. you guys that day. They, but we never read together. They cast him, and then they cast me. Do you remember your very first line in Breaking Bad? surprises me that I don't. Do you want to know? Does anyone here remember? Oh, I thought you meant the one we shot. Oh, you mean no, in the no, show? No, no, in the, very, the, the, the first episode you did. Oh, is it about the birthday? No. What is it? It's about Skylar. Oh, I'm so mean to her. <laughs> <laughs> so um, mean. I feel like you were being... Snarky. No, Nice-ish. Was I? No, I don't think so. What was uh, it? I'll tell you. She's showing a little... Oh, yeah, she's showing a little bit. She's pregnant. Yeah, yeah, that's not nice. I was trying to give her the Ben. You, the no, ben. no, no. I Vince Gilligan just kept telling me, and when I was reading for Marie, he's like, she needles her sister. She needles her, and I was like, I'm the youngest of four. I know how to do that. Like I, like I was born for this. I role. was like, <laughs> I'm gonna shine in this. Um, and she, you know. Uh, uh, listen, it would be a lie to tell you, like, there aren't parts of people in my family that are Marie, for sure. Um, good and bad, you know. Do you, uh, do you remember your last line in the show? Well, now you're going to make me cry. Oh. What is it? Well, I don't want to make you cry. Okay. No spoilers. Okay, I, no, no spoilers. Uh, sorry. <laughs> what, what is you it? You got it. It was just you got it. Oh, to Skylar. Mm -hmm. I hope they talk. I really do. Yeah, it's it's sad. that it's, was like that was heartbreaking for me. Yeah. The scene where um, I find out that she and Walt were at all involved yeah. with anything having to do with Hank being shot, and um, and then I slap her. And um, that night, I so remember shooting that night, and I I was like it's done, like that relationship, which was always, I thought very sweet, and I was like, that's done now. Like that just broke my heart, it broke my heart. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm not crying, I just, <laughs> I'm joking, I did. Um, so, you know, every single job you have, like you said, you make these friendships. Yeah. So I'm gonna name a few of your Breaking Bad co-stars, and you tell me the best thing that you learned from working with them, or a best story. This'll be easy. And, uh, easy, easy. And, you know, maybe something that you taught them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anna Gunn. Oh my God. All right, I knew Anna a little bit before. Um, God. 
Anna is such a, like, that's who you want to be in the ring with. Like, she, like, she is about what do we, like, let, let's, let's make this scene the best scene that we can. And I just, like, and, you know, we both had kids. We were moving back and forth. But I, I, I and, and so sometimes that could be distracting. Um, and, I, and our kids went to school together in L.A. They went to school together in New Mexico. And we were, like, so there, there are just some logistics in that as parents. And, like, so the beginning of the season, I remember, like, just being, you know, when I was pregnant one season, you know, like, my God, I could not have done that without her had the baby on that show without her. But um, Anna always would just like, we would just lock right in. And it was, I'm like, okay, great. Now we're doing this. And it just, I was always so, so thankful for that. What's one thing she taught you and maybe one thing she learned from you? Um, I, you know, Anna, I, I think I, I, I think she would be okay with me saying this. I think I have a little more fun on set than Anna does. And so I think sometimes she's like, maybe I need to, you know, loosen up a little. I think, I think she, and, and she did. I think, uh, you know, she got some of that from me. Yeah. And the opposite? Were you um, like, maybe I should? I, the, I, the way, like I was saying, like we'd be so caught up in like what's happening with, you know, like moving our kids at the beginning of the season and the way she was able to lock in. Like I, I definitely took that with me. Um, let's move on to Dean. I mean, you told that great story. I love him so much. Is there so another much. story you can tell, like, just to show, like, oh my how god, I got Dean stories carried on. for days in in that uh, the talking pillow scene, which is one of my favorite scenes. Um, I, you know, I was I had only been in L.A. for like six years, I think, when I got that job. So. I'd done guest stars, and but I'd never been a series regular. I'd recurred, but never been a series regular. And so I f it felt a little, it felt intimidating to me. And we were doing this scene, and it was like such a watershed moment, I think, because you see what this, like who these people are going to be to each other. And um, the director was just like, okay, we're behind, trying to move, trying to move. And I was like, oh, I want to do this and that. And Dean goes, ask for another one. And I, I don't think I would have had he not said that to me. And, um, and I did, and that's the one they used, my coverage. And, and then I, I did everything I wanted to, but it was, he was like, do, ask for another one. That's what you do. And that was, like, so sweet. I also, he and I, like, kind of developed our stuff in that moment, in that, like, not where he's telling me to ask for another one, but when, you know, he, I, I, take the pillow and I say I think that we should let Walt do whatever he wants and <laughs> he's like I agree with her can I have the pillow back and I was like thank you honey and he's like no problem like we had and I felt like in that moment you establish they're always on each other's side they're and and I love that and they carried that throughout the series no matter what she does he's there for her and no matter how you know cranky he is with her She's there for him, and I felt like in a in a show that was so great, but so there's a lot happening in it. I was really grateful to be part of that love story, which I thought was really really beautiful, and I adore Dean. I adore him. I was gonna ask how like what you taught each other, but that that story tells us like all we need to know. So yeah, we it's each it's other a really, really well. um yeah he I love him love him. How about Brian? <laughs> Brian. <laughs> um. I, well, Brian and I used to sing show tunes on the heaviest days. <laughs> we would sing Les Mis. We would sing all sorts of show tunes. Brian has a beautiful voice. He's also a freakishly good bowler um, and baseball player. He's just, like, kind of good at everything, and you want to hate him, but you can't because he's just the nicest man. So you just broke out into show tunes. Yeah, we would do a lot of okay. singing, and we, you know, like, he was so great. Um, I remember Vince, I coming up to me after a scene that Brian and I had had, and he was like, uh, you know, this is my terrible imitation of Vince Gilligan. I saw the dailies, and I thought that was really good. And I said, oh, thanks, thanks, Vince. I said, because, you know, I, I thought Brian, <laughs> Brian showed up that day. You know how some days he's like, not really there, and some days he's, <laughs> but you never know what you're going to get, which is like, Vince and I laughed about it because Brian was so, what I learned from him is how you handle rehearsal. 
I learned a lot of things from Brian, but how you handle rehearsal, we, when we would show up for rehearsal, which you know we just do right before we shoot the scene, Brian would be amazing. Set the tone for what that scene was gonna be if he, if he was driving the scene, and Walt usually was. And watching him, I was like, oh my God. I, I remember having breakfast with him. We, that was a writer strike, so we went home early that season. And Dean and his wife and Brian and my uh, husband and I and our kids, we went and had breakfast before we all flew back to LA. And I remember uh, we shot the entire first season. Well, not the entire first season, but what we were gonna shoot. And I said, this is your time. Like, you're ready, like the role is there for you. This is like Lear for TV. And like, if this would have come to you 10 years ago, I'm sure he would have been great. But it was that moment where he was as an actor, as a person, and that that role came to him at that time. What would he say that you taught him? Um, he used to, this is so sweet, he used to call me the light of our show. With that. And I, yeah. I um, wear that proudly. But I, I, you know, Dean, I remember at that breakfast, Dean was like, thanks for the seasons of work. Because Dean's like, you're so good in this. How could this not be? And we all loved each other so much. Like, we were just like, please, please, please pick it up, AMC. Is there any video of the show tunes? Of the <laughs> I don't think Will so. Will release it? <laughs> I don't think so. But he does have a really beautiful voice. Okay. Yeah. We'll never know. Um, okay, so before we go on, um, it, answering as yourself, sure. I'm going to give you some three, three characters. You get to invite one over for dinner, oh. you get to marry one, oh. and then you get to murder one. I know you're not a murderer. <laughs> Pretend you're playing a role. Okay. Skylar, Walter, Hank. I have to kill one of them? Okay, should we make it easier? I knew she would have a problem with the murder. I thought of, you get to make meth with one of them? I don't know. <laughs> well, you make meth with the one who's good at making meth. Yeah, well, like, then, then we know. Yeah, so I think murder's more fun. Yeah, I, 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 I prison, can't. Prison, prison. I, I mean, prison's not That's fun. almost I'm worse not. than the murder. <laughs> um, you know, I can go there. Okay, really? It Are would sure? be, yes, because after knowing what I learned about yeah. Oh, but weird, why? But I felt more betrayed by Skylar because she was my sister. Yeah. Than I did, like, I, I mean, I hate Walt just as much at the end of that. Yeah. But love him too. Um, okay, what are my options? Skylar, Walter, Hank. And I marry one of them? You have to marry one? You invite I'm one gonna of marry them Hank. Dinner. Okay. For sure, that works yeah. if it ain't broke. Uh, <laughs> Skylar. Um, yeah, I guess I. <sighs> And what's the other option? Marry, murder? Uh, dinner. Dinner, so, you know, I put it in there for I'd you. I'd have dinner with Skylar. Oh, thank God, I thought you were going to kill Skylar. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'd have dinner with Skylar. I guess I'd have to be the person to kill Walt, even though I really don't want to, you which I'm not to. proud of. Yeah. I'm not, like, That's he's... interesting. You love him you, as a character. It seems like it. There was a point... You know, when he does, like, he just reaches the basement of just horrible things you could do. And I'm like, God, I'm still rooting for him. That's interesting, because I'm going to go on what we're talking Which about Which is, next. I, I yeah. know, like, and I was like, I know I should hate you, but I still want Walt to win. It's like, I, I, you, like you go back to the scene in episode one, the car wash scene. And you're like, I want this guy to have his day. And, and Brian, like, my God, a different actor, I probably wouldn't have felt the same. Yeah. That's kind of the brilliance of that show. Right? You know, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more later. But, um, you know, I did notice, like, Skylar got a lot of hate. And so I wanted to ask you, do you think the women on television shows get a lot harsher criticism? Um, are, are women judged more harshly, in your opinion? Well, not just on TV. I mean, that's well, just everywhere, too. right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, it's the expectations mm -hmm. that other people put on us that we, yeah. you know, and that sometimes we put on each other and sometimes we put on ourselves and I'm guilty of all of that too. Yeah. Um, and so it's, a, it's an effort to change that and how we look at it. Yeah. Um, you know, Marie, like speaking of like how we all were rooting for Walt, Marie is written as the heavy a lot of times and her character 
um, can be seen as annoying because she's you know trying to bring down the hero. Um, did you did you ever get hate online for that? Like from sure, but I you know like to me that doesn't. Um, you have to come to a place with that and and no one teaches you this in drama school and you think it's nothing you're ever going to have to deal with again like I just wanted you to do plays in Seattle do jobs mm -hmm. like work um so you just I they're going to be people like they they say like they're everybody has someone say something about them I mean if Santa Claus was a character there would be people that'd be like you look fat in your suit like or you know like something that's like get out and run Santa or like why does it take you so long to deliver the presents? It'd be something. Yeah, there'd what be is he doing all 360? Yeah, what do you do the other days? Yeah. Like, there'd be something. Like, there's, like, it, and that just, I, I'm not a therapist, but I, I like, what, whatever, how that feels good to someone or they think it's going to feel good yeah. to say that to someone and then hide behind anonymity, I, that eludes me. But I'm just glad I'm not them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so, glad I'm not so that. So do you read comments online? Um, not really. Okay, I, I hardly that's... look at anything. Yeah. You say that like, oh, that's good. That's good. No, because in general... <laughs> because you, you get, would crawl you into a, a hole and never come out. <laughs> we would have a different mystery guest because you would not be able to leave your home. Um, I just like... There's just some things I just don't... I just... I it's don't... I don't look to. at myself online. I just don't... I just don't. I don't. Yeah. All right. Should we go Better Call Saul for a second here? You yeah. went back. Um, I, have a, I have a question. Did you, was it always planned that you just come back that one time? Or did they want you to come back sooner? They had talked about me coming back sooner. Okay. And then, <clears throat> you know, we've been talking about it for a little while. But I, I don't think they knew what they were going to write in that last yep. episode until that season. Yeah. What was so, it like going back? It was great. And yeah. you guys, I said nothing. And that is not easy for How me. How long did you keep that secret for? I don't know. And I'm really horrible about time. Like, I have no sense of time. And the pandemic only made it worse. Um, so I'm, I'm really useless with time. But I, I didn't even tell my mother. Like, I just, I didn't want to ruin that for anybody, for yeah. my friends that were writing it, for our, for the fans that are a huge part of the team. Like, there's no show without, like, the, like I told you, like the Breaking Bad fans, because nobody knew where to find us. Nobody knew what we were season one, but our fans were so, we had the best fans. That's how we got to season two. Yeah. And then more people started to watch, and then we made it to season three, and then, you know, um... So I didn't want to ruin it for anybody, but it was really hard. I was really happy to go back. It was hugely emotional. Like I yeah. cried and then we had so much of the same crew. Um, they cried when they saw me and we like, I went, my, my God, my fitting probably took three hours and then we all had lunch together. I, because I just like, I spent so much time with that whole crew and it was. I mean, they were like family to you for so many years. Absolutely, right? so, still are. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so let's say Marie gets a spinoff. What would the title of that show be? Oh God, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, you could. There could be a play like Everyone Loves the Rocks and the Minerals, um, mm -hmm. Purple Haze. I don't know. Like there could be. Stolen. I don't wear purple in my life or on other shows <laughs> <laughs> anymore, because um, that just like felt like a haze. different person. I'm with that. Yeah, we could. Like, is it a comedy? Yeah. I don't know. Is or it, it could be like stealing Marie? Like, oh no, yeah, like I'm steal just... your. I always get like good social media stuff. Like yeah. you. I or stole your steel heart. Yeah. Magnolia is spelled S-T-E-A-L. Yes. That's good. That's stealing. fair. You so, thought about this. I, I mean, just a little bit. Yes. Um, okay, Life in Pieces. Yes. Uh, you played Heather Hughes. Oh, I love that. You guys love that. I love that show. Yeah. What was your rose and thorn of oh. that project? And you don't really have to say a thorn, but oh. I feel like you learned. Oh, I have a thorn oh, that we didn't that, do another season. That's my That's big thorn. thorn. <laughs> um... The Rose was everybody. I love that cast. Um, and Tommy, I was just doing a project with Tommy Sadowski, who's not only one of the best actors in the world, but a very dear friend of mine. Um, Diane Weist. Like, I, oh, and I told you this morning, like, I'm like, if she was here, she would go, hi. <laughs> She and Jim used to um, like, like, kind of like flirt, but fight with each other. And she would get mad, and he would say things to get her mad. And then she'd go, "No, 
Oh! She is so lovely and was such a hero to me. I remember I got chicken pox in college. And, um, and I was like, oh my God, and it's such a big weekend. There's this party I want to go to with my new boyfriend, and now I can't because I have chicken pox. Oh, and I was supposed to be in this play. Now I can't be in the play because I have chicken pox. And my parents had to get me a hotel suite on campus because I was living in the dorms. And so I was just watching movies. Yeah. And I watched Hannah and her sisters. And um, whatever we our feelings about uh, Woody Allen, she is undeniably amazing in that. Mm -hmm. And everyone is. But she just, I remember watching that, my like 20 year old, you know, or 19 year old self. And, and I was like, that, like I want to. And then to get to sit next to her when we would do table reads every week was like, dream yeah my kids used to bird sit for diane like she's amazing she's like and when you meet someone that you've looked up to for so long it's so easy to be disappointed but i almost never have been i i can't think of a time when i've met someone and i'm well there's one person there's one person <laughs> it's a, it was a guy and i was like oh i thought you would be better than that but that's who you are um <laughs> But Diane was like everything I wanted her to be, and then oh, more. Diane's your rose. I she love that. is like, oh, like a bouquet of roses. <laughs> She's amazing and lovely and hilarious, and you know, loves to rap. Like she's amazing, amazing. So your your current project is Accused. Um, yes. Tell us about it. Well, it's an anthology. So, um, which I love watching. Like I, I, it, it because it's like. It's kind of like, um, you know, like when you go to a festival and like you get a grab bag and it's like, or you can get a grab bag and it's like, it could be something really great in it or it could be just garbage in there. And when I was a kid, I was like, like just shy of like, I think there's going to be a TV in my grab bag. <laughs> like, so optimistic about the grab bag. Um, and I would choose to see it for the best it was. But this is like the best grab bag. You're like, I don't know what this episode is going to be or be about, but I know it's going to be good. It's Howard Gordon and Alex Gonza who did, um, and David Shore who did, um, well, uh, Howard and, and Alex did um, Homeland, which was an amazing show. And Howard is just like, he's, he's also one of those people, like he's so talented and so great at everything. Like you, you're like, what, what, what's the, What's the trick? Like, what is it? But it was so fun to do. And I got to work with B.B. Wood, who I worked with on Love, Victor, which is a show I'm still heartbroken about. That's not, isn't that just like, and, and I have to tell you, I, um, and, and please know this is not a story about like, you guys, I get recognized, but um, like sometimes when I'm out and you know, if people come up to me and tell me they like my work, I, I almost always assume it's gonna be Breaking Bad. And then a lot of people have, have seen Life of Pieces and loved it. Man, I gotta tell you, the love I get from Love Victor fans, and then, and they're always the best people. Like, I'm like, let's just hang out. Like, and it was one of those shows that I could watch with my kids, and they, you know, loved watching it with me aside from the, episode called Sex Cabin, because nobody wants to watch <laughs> Sex Cabin with their mother. Did, you, did they leave the room? Did you guys just not watch that? Oh, no, we watched it all. No, we watched it all. Oh, we watched it all. How did that, <laughs> how did that go down? <laughs> um, you know, I think once they, they, they didn't fight it anymore, that I'm like, we're watching. Like, we're both fans. Like, we're all fans of the show. So we're going to, I'm not going to miss it. We're going to watch it. We're not going to be that family that's like, you, like, you know, you I'm, there. yeah, I mean, I'm I, pretty open with I my kids. I once watched a movie that had a love scene with Zac Efron and my dad and my grandmother and I were watching together and it was the most awkward room. My kids would not want to watch it with their grandmother <laughs> or grand, <laughs> like none of them. They would be like, that's, no, they would, no, 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 no. I see Zac Efron and I'm triggered. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely no. not. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, so, <laughs> like reliving it right now. Um, so casting wise, um, as you're progressing in your career. Oh my God, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, 
No, he did this. He did this travel show where he goes to Iceland, and my dad. That must have been really hard for you. I love Iceland. My dad comes in and he's like, "Okay, you can. I'll watch later." I was like, "Okay, same memory." Your dad's like, "Look at Iceland," and you're like, "My eyes, my (laughs) eyes." Um, Okay, we're gonna start the Q and A soon, but you know, casting wise, as you progressed in your career, how are you finding the roles for women? Like, are they getting better? Are they? Do they need to get better? I mean. Listen, even if they were amazing all the time, I'd say get better. Get better. But get better for everybody. But definitely get better for women. I mean, listen, there, there was a time where I've been like, I just want to understand. So my character has just been home all day, doing nothing, reading the paper, reading a magazine, waiting for my husband to come home from work. It's three scenes later, and that's still what I'm doing. Oh, I have had a glass of wine. I just want to understand what, like, because we're saying something. Yeah. So like, let's what is this think poor about, woman doing all day? Yeah, like, yeah. so let's, let's think about what, what we're saying, what we're saying, you know? Okay. I love that. So more more stories about what she's what what she's doing, or just about like you know I, I think it goes back to that expectations. Like I would always you know like I never got it because I guess America doesn't want to look at it. But I like my house on Life in Pieces. I was like mess it up. Yeah. Why is it like Heather's house would not be pristine? Yeah. Like this, Heather's a slacker. Like, let it, and she's okay with that. Like, there's some things she takes really seriously, and then there's some things she's just like, I don't know. Um, And so I always, like, I always felt like that, I didn't want to be part of, like, you know, adding to what's expected of of people that like, like do like, this and you're like. I feel like keep you it. make these very like on paper it could look like a very average role, and you just bring such character to everything. Oh, that that so. is the nicest thing, like the kindest thing you could say to me, and that means so much to me. I always want them to be living, breathing people that we 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 hopefully care about, um, even the serial killer and. <laughs> I, w- I want to, like, I like to go on journeys with yeah. people. Like, what what do they do? Ne- like, I want to watch the next episode. So you kind of touched upon this just a little earlier, but what is the best fan interaction you've had? It could be recently, it could be ever, like, the funniest. Wait, which one did I say? The, Vic- the, the Victoria. Oh, the, Love, the, Victor. Love, Love Victor. Victor. Love Victor. Love Victor. Yeah. Oh, so, I thought you meant when we were talking. I'm like, what oh, no, did no, no, I tell no. you? Just, so, like... Is there one that you can remember that's like either strange, funny, quirky, um, embarrassing? I um, remember being in New York, and I feel like I'm. I live in LA. I've lived in New York, um, but I live in LA, and I feel like New York is like we're so much cooler than you, LA. And I'm like, fine, you are. You absolutely are. You you win. Um, but I've also had people always tell me, they're like, in New York, people don't really care if you're famous. They don't really care. Like, they just, we're New York, we're cool, we don't care. Um, that was not my experience when I was there because it was the last season of Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. which was intense. And in New York, you're just walking around. In LA, we have to drive to get everywhere. So you're in the safety of your car not in New York, and my kids, you know, like, if I was around, I would walk them to school or walk them, and I remember being on the, <laughs> being on the street with walking my kids somewhere, and this woman was on the phone, and she was talking, and she was a big conversation, and then she was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, <laughs> Marie is walking by me, right, yep, Yep, nope, no purple. (laughs) I know, I have to go, I have to go, I have to go. Oh my God, oh my God. And it's funny, my daughter and this woman was so sweet. And she was such a, like, I feel like she was such a big personality. She made, like, Marie look subtle (laughs) and, and, like, mousy. Um, she was lovely and wonderful. And my daughter said, why do people act like they know you? (laughs) And they don't really know you. Because that's the brilliance of what you do. Well, but it's also, and I said this to my kids because sometimes they are not in the mood for it. Um, especially during sex cab and they're like, oh, how are you on the show? (laughs) Um, they're, they're not in the mood sometimes, but they, I, you know, I said, this is the thing. I said, um, 
sorry, I'm going to get emotional because I, I genuinely love what I do and have to thank everyone for inviting me into their home. It's different. Movie stars, I get a real kick out of them. I real do. I really do. Like there are times we've we've been at things when Breaking Bad kind of you know like gave me a taste of that because they wanted to hang out with us, and I I was I'm like oh I don't run with those horses, um, but when you do TV and we watch shows all differently now, but there was a time in my career. I was in people's living rooms and I would be going through this really horrible stuff, you know, and they went through it with me. I fully believe that. <laughs> this is going to sound so cheesy, but I, it's, I'm just being honest. When Hank died, I get that it's pretend. He's fine. I can call, he's fine. Um, She's not fine. When, when Hank died, that was so hard for me because I lived it. And Marie, I knew, I'm like, what the fuck is she going to do now without him? And, and I was so proud that that loss was so much for her. But I knew I had the fans going through that with me. Yeah. And so that feeds into it. It, it, really, it really does. And so I, you know, I told my kids, I said, it's a privilege. I'm, I'm in people's homes once a week. Right now, twice a week, because I'm on two shows. And you like, should be like, I have another family. <laughs> Any of them. <laughs> my other family loves to hear from people who recognize they me. They love watching Sex Cabin. Is that what it's called? <laughs> they got Sex Cabin t-shirts, and they love it. They're happy to wear them. I think that, that fan, though, came up with the title for the spinoff, No Purple. No Purple. No Purple. <laughs> um, all right, should we do a little Q&A? Don't be shy. <laughs> yes. Don't be shy. I'm not. I wouldn't tell you even if you asked me to, or even for a burrito. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do it. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do it because, like, you see her in this moment, M Mia, and then you see her, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but like you see her years later after this tragedy. Um, I read the book and was like, yes. You know, um, I knew she wasn't the lead and I was cool with that because we shot in the Dominican Republic and I only want to be gone for <laughs> so long, um, even though the DR is gorgeous. Um, but I really wanted to tell that story because it's every parent's worst nightmare. And it just, oh God, there's a really, I, 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 wanted to, I, I want you to see the finale. I wanted to, I wanted, I'm dying to talk to you about it. I'm really happy with it. I just watched it Wednesday. Oh my God, it's good. But you see, like, it, it's, it's well done. It's well done. And that book was just amazing. That was a very good answer. She's like, tell me this, but don't give me any spoilers. So that was excellent. Um, did I see one? Yeah. Were you happy with the way you were embedded? Did you have the power to do what you were saying? I like that you think I don't have the power. <laughs> <laughs> so good at what I do. Um, there is not a world I could ever imagine going into that room with those writers and being like, really guys? Like, what do you think? Like, I have some ideas. Um, I read that last episode and then I texted Vince, I read it, I cried. And then I um, texted Vince and I said, that is the perfect ending for this show. Now, I did go in multiple times and ask the writers, um, Six Feet Under fans? Are we yeah. Six Feet Under yeah. fans? That finale? That was the best. That fuck. <laughs> and I said, please, just write it. We don't have to shoot it, but I want to know what all of you and your amazing, like, what happens? Every show should have that just as an extra ending so we know what happens. I think if we don't get that out of this strike, I don't know what we're doing it for. <laughs> I agree. going to start a YouTube channel where she's just <laughs> editing 
together <laughs> endings for every show. But I, and so I kind of gave that to like what I imagined for Marie. And I loved what they did with her. That, you know, like the last time we see her in Breaking Bad, she's wearing white. And I've, but I will tell you this, and I'm not proud of it. I wanted them all to win. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. And it would not have been good television. Like, what they did was great. I would have done a super sappy ending where, like, you know, <laughs> they, they, they learn from their mistakes and they're better. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch that. I don't even, I would never be on that show. Like, but, but I just was so attached to those characters, you know. Um, and then how great that we got to, you know, I, I got to have that yeah. with Saul when, um, I, right? Yeah, I can say flash. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yes. Um, so I thought, I read that and thought it was just the perfect ending, perfect ending. Um, Did you not like shout it? shout out to all the writers right now, Breaking Bad. I mean, <laughs> Better Call Saul, everything. Because if we have to watch Betsy's comp compilations on YouTube. <laughs> not it's ba Breaking Bad the musical. <laughs> it's a feel-good comedy. I, I would actually like to see that. So, um, Any other questions? Yes. That's tough, um, and I don't want to take too long pondering it. I have to say, um, you know, when we went to, um, must have been the upfronts, uh, when we got picked up, season one, so we're all in a car together, and we, um, and I was told, I totally be big sistered that shit. I was like, all right, Colin, you're gonna open us up with it, like, and I, because I'm like, we want this to go well, and then you go, um, Stephen Colbert calls it the petting zoo when you go and then people come up and take photos with you and um, and I was like we I said we love this show we all want it to run forever and so we need to do whatever we need to do so that CBS and Fox want to run us for six seasons it didn't work out that way but we did get four um, but being in the car together I was like oh my god this is so like the show it's so <laughs> like the show like we all did everything our characters did and I'm like it just, sometimes it just comes together and you're like, this is why it works. Like, yes, we have great lines, we have funny jokes, we have all of that, but it really was that group of people playing those characters, which there's, you know, there's some of us and all, all of them, and it was just a delightful family. Um... I feel like the joke is like, don't do it. Um, <laughs> but, but I guess that is true. I would say I, if, if you, what's her name? Linnea. Linnea. Um, only do it if you have to, because there are going to be days and everybody, I don't care who, uh, Julia Rob, anybody, everybody has where you're like, oh my God, I really wanted that job and I didn't get it. And that hurts me. There's a lot of rejection. Most of it is rejection. I just did a project with Mimi Rogers, who's amazing. And she said she had this conversation with her daughter. She goes, most of my job is rejection. You think it's like, ooh, riding in a limo to the premiere, because that's what you know. That's the stuff I've invited you in on. But only do it if you have to, because otherwise, why would you want to put up with the garbage part of it? Um, and then there aren't any rules. Like, it took me a minute to learn that, but I didn't go to, you know, some crazy fancy school. And then I moved to Seattle and did plays and, you know, ended up on Breaking Bad. So if you, it's, it's very, if you build it, they will come. I think if you, and I still feel that way about shows now. Now with the writer's strike, I'm like, if there's a good show, people are going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. We're all going to watch it. Like, and I think it's the same thing. If you're good at what you do, and you, you got to love it. I don't know any actor who is successful and doesn't love it. I was just going to say, if you could go back to that first day on Breaking Bad. And good Bad, luck to her. Um, what advice would you give your younger self on that first day? I don't... No rules? Um... Do you mean like my first day on Breaking Bad? Yeah, like on set. Like you go back and you're like, okay, give you me know, I think earlier on, like I love that Dean was there for me in that mm -hmm. way, but I like, I, w I wish I could have trusted myself a little bit more yeah. 
early in the beginning. But I, but then I, then once I found it, I did. And, and a big part of that was Vince. Okay. You know, I was like, Vince, I also learned this. Anything you want to get out of a showrunner, ask them during the pilot. They are so tired. <laughs> they are so tired. So tell Linnea this little bit, this yeah. little tidbit. Um, and I was like, what do you think... <laughs> what do you think Marie does for a living? And he's like, I, I don't know. What, what do you think? I'm like, well, I think she, <laughs> she's maybe an insurance adjuster or an x-ray technician. And he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted her to do something because of Walt's situation. I wanted her to be in the medical field, but not a doctor or a nurse. And so that's what they gave me. And my God, was that the gift that kept on giving? I also was like, I think she loves purple. If purple is her color, she's 200%. She is like in, in. And they were like, I think they were like, okay, buckle up. I mean, it was <laughs> so much purple. My, my house, we shot at a house in Albuquerque, this gorgeous house in Albuquerque. Oh, Fred and June, the people who lived there. Poor Fred and June. Had to live with my purple shit all season long. <laughs> we painted walls. It was just a purple explosion. Um, but but I loved I loved that about her. I loved that it was like so quirky and weird and like I loved that about her. Okay, so sadly we're out of time for our mystery guest, but look out for her on No Purple or her. Oh. <laughs> Can I just thank you guys? This has been so delightful, and you totally could have been like, oh, God. No, no, never. And you were, and you've been so lovely, and like I love. I'm so happy to be here and talk TV and and what Let's we do. Give her a round of applause. Just thank yes. you so much. <laughs> <laughs>